convene the meeting, uh, the hearings um, of the uh, for our annual plan uh, 2022 to 2023. Um, I'd like to invite representatives to, of Te Runanga o Naitahu, um, Tanya Stevens, um, Onoko, um, and uh, uh, oh, Debbie Tikau and uh, Rick Tainui, if I could invite the three of you up and um, you know, with with with, with su sufficient distancing, if you're comfortable um, there to take your mask off, then that that's absolutely fine for the presentation. Some people prefer it; um, others are a bit more nervous. So we're we're very open to that. Thank you. Thank you. Ko uh, katirati hei Māori ora ko te hiki kitarangi ko te wai o Awaiti e re kitai ko kati e kihu. Ko nai tāre wa ki te whenua, ko o nuku te marae, uh, ko Rick Tainui tuku ingoa. Um, look, I'm going to be short and brief, um, and, and I just want to firstly say thank you for the opportunity for us to speak to our submissions to the annual plan, uh, first and foremost. Um, currently, look, I'm the Ōnuku chairperson, and this is, you know, Debbie, we've been in here a few times, and Tanya... Uh, is here from Tarunanga or Naitahu. Um, and Tanya will lead off once I've just finished my little piece, and uh, it shouldn't take us too long. Um, look, in 2002, Takapuniki became uh, the first site within the Naitahu Takiwa to be registered as a Wahi Tapu. Um, and it's, it is a, a, a location of historic events that, events that have helped shape our nation. And um, I've probably said that a few times when I've been in here. But look, as a reserve, the site is open to the community. Um, the heritage and importance of the site can be appropriately represented and managed via the imp implementation of the master plan. Um, Considerable time and investment has already been made by Ornuka Runanga, in addition to the Christchurch City Council. Uh, it is essential that this work is completed uh, in a manner that is appropriate to the site. Um, and I, I will just close by saying that, look, I've had previous discussions with the Mayor around how we will encourage central government to um, complete, this is the first stage we're talking about, but complete future stages. Um, uh, on June the 24th, we have the unveiling of the first PO at Takapuniki, and obviously there will be some invitations coming out to you guys. Um, it's it's amazing, and um, but it's just the first part of the journey for us, and um, hopefully over time we will end with something that is amazing, not just for us as mana whenua, but for everyone of Aotearoa. Move to you, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, kia ora koutou, uh, ko tapu au nuku te mauka, ko waitoa te awa, ko taki te mita waka, ko kaitahu te iwi, ko Tani Stevens a hau. Um, I've been employed by Tūrunanga o Naitahu for eight years now, um, and here's to support o nuku runanga. That is the primary reason for me being here today, and indeed the Tūrunanga o Naitahu submission is to demonstrate that support for Onuku Runanga and the kaupapa um, in front of us today. I do just want to highlight, as Rick did, the importance of the site for the whole of Naitahu and also for the nation. Um, I'm sure you've read the submission and probably already aware of a lot of the background. Um, but in particular, of course, there was the Brig Elizabeth incident and events which led to um, really... Uh, they help to shape our nation, is what I'm trying to say, and so that makes it relevant for all of us. Of course, the 2012 Conservation Report is a wonderful piece of information and talks about a desire to assert sovereignty over New Zealand by the British out of a concern for both, both Māori people, but also to secure economic opportunity. And look, I'm no historian, I'm a planner by trade, but that sounds quite important to me. Um, and of course, since then, and as set out in the summary, appended to both submissions, um, and in more detail, the conservation report, 
uh, various events have taken place which have disregarded the significance of the site to Ōnukuruninga, to Naitahu and to the nation. Notably, of course, is the construction ongoing operation, albeit for now, of the wastewater treatment plant. And there was also the rubbish dump. But as I said, I've worked for Tiriniga for eight years now. And in that time, I've seen a change. And I think that the, the kaupapa, which Debbie will talk about in more detail, is really an essential step to moving forward. So I'll pass on. Well, kia ora koutou, ko Debbie tiko taku ingoa. Um, it's really, it's a real honour to sit and talk to you again about this important site. I'm just going to grab this computer here off Rick. Um, and just to take you through some of the progress of where we are and why we're standing, you know, sitting here today um, talking to you again. So um, this, this first slide just shows some of our whānau out of Ōnuku and so you understand just the significance of this site and what it means to Ōnuku whānau. Um, and that we are within a location that is rich in cultural heritage. Um, Akaroa Harbour is, um, is, is, is steeped in whakapapa and the stories of this place we want to be able to share with the whole country. Um, it's, it's, uh, so Takapunaki, what we are trying to do there is tell the story of that place but also explain the context in which it is in. So we've... We've put this slide up before. This is the master, landscape master plan, and what it's showing is the overall vision of what is proposed. And what you're looking at is a series of interconnecting uh, takarangi, and they represent the Māori worldview. This landscape is um, the design of it is is quite unique in that we it is based on. Uh, Māori kaupapa opposed to being applied in some way or some finish it is it is the Māori world view so this was this came out of um, many many years of working with uh, Waitai Tikau Piritainui and um, the late Morris uh, Reverend Morris Gray and what you know the instruction that they've given us over the years was they wanted their stories they wanted the Māori, the, the, the Māori would view um, their history of this site to be shared with the whole world. And so the design references that, it represents that. And so we believe it's truly, truly unique. We were at today, uh, we are well under construction with the first stage of the first takarangi. And that, was been, that has been designed to be accessible. Now, I don't know if any of you have been out to that site, you'll know that it's, and if you have, you'll all know that it's quite sloped. So to get this construction and to make this first takarangi accessible to everybody, so that it was truly, um, so that our kaumatua could get to it, our, our, our grandparents, people with disabilities, people of, of every, you know, everyone could access it. We wanted this to be um, available to all. So to get that required an awful lot of earthworks and a lot of clever thinking. So here's some photos of where we're at currently. In fact, that's not quite current. We were sent through some photos of um, uh, that are a we, we can see that the, the pathway systems are a little bit more advanced and unfortunately they didn't come through until this morning. But um, we can see here that uh, we, you know, this is going. This is going to be quite fantastic, and you can see the double spiral of the takarangi. What that means is that as we're walking along, uh, the idea is that you know, this the double spiral represents um, both past, present, and future. So as we walk in one spiral, where one path, we're walking past the other path, and each path tells an element of that story. So with the four interconnecting takarangi, each one and parts part of the story of that place. So it is an educative um, and hopefully transformative experience for everybody. Uh, the po that stands in the middle is Potu Turaki or Te Mai Haranui. It represents, um, I suppose, the, the connection to Takapunaki. It represents Te Mai Haranui. It represents where Onuku wants to go into the future. It stands at about eight metres, or actually so, seven metres tall. It's significant in its height, uh, and it holds a lot of money, and it's highly visible as you come, as you drive up Ornuku Road. It's a real statement of money for Naitahu for Ornuku Runanga. 
um, that was designed by um, uh, by our incredible carver, Fane Robinson, um, who's also been working with us on the overall design of the reserve as well. So we, um, uh, I'm just going to put, oops, Sure, what's happened there? I seem to have lost. Oh well, looks like that's it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I was going to show you some images of some of the smaller details that are coming up. We um, we are looking at approximately seven hectares of native revegetation as well on site. There's going to be, the, the future stages will also include walkways throughout the remainder of um, Takapuniki that will take you down into the, into the many um, gully systems. Uh, we, there are going to be two main entrances that will be marked by, by quite significant waharoa that will also form um, in places where people can kind of gather and they will, they'll be lined with that interpretation. There will be um, minor entranceways marked with palisade fencing and, um, and uh, kind of entrance markers or, or a smaller PO. And um, we're also looking at a future stage where we will be uh, restoring the barracks and turning that also into an information centre. What we anticipate with this is that this will be a real destination. You know, people will come here to visit it. It will be the Waitangi of the South Island. Um, and we believe that it's, it's, you know, it'll be a unique experience for everybody. Um, we have come a bit unstuck with the earthworks, with the, uh, I suppose, the uh, increased cost of, of construction, the same as every other element being built, built at the moment, uh, and also with COVID. So we... We're, we do. We are wanting to complete this. We don't quite have enough money to do it. It's cost a lot more than what was anticipated, um, and there was also a, you know, there was a, a number of unforeseen costs associated with the earthworks as well and the instability of the slope system. So um, we are. That's what we're here for today. Is to just to let you know we do want to finish it. We think it's worthwhile, and um, it's just really some of those final details that are going to you know that will really make it special. We've got, um, on the retaining walls, we're looking at a veneer that represents feather. That's our connection to Harangi, you know, Sky Father. And um, these sorts of details are really important and part of that, you know, narrative telling. There's also, Fane's developed a, um, some beautiful uh, core fi fi design work to be, to, you know, to be located within, around the Po, um, and that will be flanked by two seats and, as, and there are seven um, inserts of what we call the um, uh, chevrons, you know, that go into the path as we walk around. And each one of those chevrons imparts part of the story of Tamai Haranui and that narrative. So there are a number of details that are still awaiting to be completed. Uh, the landscaping is another one. And to continue that chevron, we're also using a range of, of boulders to connect the two path systems. And those boulders are going to, uh, are being designed with rocks and planting to create lizard habitat because within, we're also working on the landfall site. So the lizards that, um, the skinks that, are, that, have been like, that have been found there, we're wanting to relocate them to form, you know, that nice little bit of intricate detail a little bit of ecosystem, um, you know, for our, our visiting schools. And so there's, yeah, there are all these, there's a number of, of sort of unfinished elements that we would like to see complete. So that's us. If anyone has got any questions. Well, just first of yes. all, um, thank you very much for your presentation and, and, and great to see the, you know, the development that's there. I think we're all looking forward to coming there um, when Naitahu was at um, at uh, Onaku uh, on Waitangi Day, we were coming the day before for this um, unveiling, and uh, sadly, with COVID restrictions, um, uh, first of all, Waitangi Day didn't happen at Onaku. It's my last occasion as mayor to do a citizenship ceremony on that marae. So, um, and uh, unfortunately, sad. Um, but the day before got got cancelled as well, and that meant that 
that, that there's a new date. So it's great to note the new date, and um, I've already sent a note up to my office to say, hold the date. Um, and uh, and there will be something significant about holding that at Matariki, um, you know, on that day. So so I think we can create a, a new sense of significance out of the day that we've been we've been given. Um, but I recall when the Takapuniki Reserve um, uh, plan was adopted by this council, I think it was 2017, um, might have been 16, um, but we also um, made a resolution that we would apply for national reserve status. And uh, we haven't done that because we've been waiting for the plan to be in place, um, and, or no, it might have been earlier that we apply, we, we pass the resolution, but I'm just going off the top of my head. There was an, uh, a, a decision made by this council that we would, um, but we have been working um, alongside um, on a call to try, try and establish what is the, the, the best approach to this. And I think we're now coming up to the point where we do need to sit down and meet and formulate um, what would be a joint proposal, um, which we could go to central government with for, the, for, that, for that element, which would be in place, in my view, ahead of the, the, the remaining stages of the um, of, of the reserve. It's such a significant place, and I I would love um, all of New Zealand to understand just the significance to our shared history, because this is not just this is not a history that belongs to um, Mana Whenua. It's it's a history that has been narrated across generations by Mana Whenua, but it is our shared history as a nation and, you know, not reflecting a very um, good point of that history. So um, are we able to sort of take from this that you'd be willing to meet to talk about how we might progress the development of a, a national reserve status? Look, the answer is absolutely yes, Leanne. Um, you know, there's no way we want to see a half finish, you know, development of, you know, that has this mana. It's just... Um, hopefully, you know, you guys can come over in, to the unveiling and, and you'll get a sense of how special this place is if you stand on the Whenua. It's, it's like nothing else. It's, it's amazing. Um, but while I've got an opportunity, I want to look over the last four years, I've been part of the co-governance group for Takapuniki and it's been chaired by the amazing Pam Richardson. But on there are some incredible council staff that have been fully invested mm. along with us to, to make this happen. And it hasn't been just us saying we want to make it happen. I can tell you that Paul, Russell, uh, Steve, they have been incredible uh, along this journey. Thank you. Yep. yep. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I might suggest to, um, that we set up a meeting before the 24th of June yep. just to establish the framework for taking it forward yep. post the 24th of June. And any support, like we have, we did invite Kitty Tapu Allen to attend on the 24th, but she's otherwise engaged because it's Matariki. Um, and I had a conversation with Tracy McClellan last night, and, and she tells me she thinks Carmel Cepaloni's coming. And, but we haven't heard that officially. Um, any support we can get from you, Leanne, mm -hmm. around rattling them up, um, we would love to have them here. Thank you. Uh, Yanni? I mean, um, it would be great to try and get the Prime Minister to come, such as the significance of the site. And I mean, I don't know where our pro protocols have got to, but the whole application process for a national reserve is not very well defined. So I do think there needs to be some sort of work done. And certainly this isn't the first time I've raised this when we've had these reports. But, um, and, and first, I just want to acknowledge George Tikar, which, I mean, you know, mm. from, from me personally... He was the one that impressed upon me one of the hearings how significant the site was, and I just want to acknowledge him because um, I can't think of this without him. You know, so just our thoughts to, of, of him today as you as you speak. But I guess my question is, in terms of elevating the status, given how significant the site is, do, do you think the the group? I, I don't know if it's the working group or the co governance group. Has it got sufficient representatives at a high enough level? For the status of the site, I, because I guess I'm just really concerned that, and I know 
again, when I was on one of the hearings around this, classifying it as a historic reserve, I know it wasn't, I know it was a sense of a long journey, right? And it, and it had taken a long time to get progress, but I guess I'm just a little bit frustrated since 2007 or 8 or 10 that we're still sort of, you know, not getting things moved as quick as possible around doing what's right by the site. So, you know, do you, do you think there would be an opportunity to think about how we have a greater elevation of status in terms of the, the co-governance group? And I say that without knowing who's on it or what the protocols are, but it's just to try and give a bit more emphasis to the significance. Well, the answer to that is yes, again. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, there is nothing we wouldn't do to have this established. And, and, and as Debbie said, this is really our Waitangi, you know, um, for Naitahu down here. It's the most significant site. It's a catalyst for the treaty. There's a whole lot of things that you're aware of, Yanni, that, that um, I'm hoping I'm, we're not, that I'm alive still to have this completed. You know, and you referenced, you know, my uncle. Um, <clears throat> that put a bit of a tear in my eye. Mm -hmm. Long journey. Thank you. Um, Aaron. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. It, does, it is looking fantastic. So I've only, my, my questions are a lot lighter. Good. So uh, there won't <laughs> be any tear in your eye from uh, design <laughs> questions. Uh, are you adding lighting at all in any way, shape or form? Uh, yes, at the moment for for this first stage, uh, the the PO is going to be lit um, until the reserve is complete and it's a you know a buzz of activity. Uh, we would be unlikely to put too much more lighting in, just simply because um, it, it's around it's around safety. And so once the once the facilities are in place. Because like Waitangi, we anticipate there will be um, there will be the experience of the reserve, but there's also going to be facilities on on site, um, other things to do, places to uh, like the Red House could potentially be an educational facility for Wananga, and then there's the barracks as well, um, and potent there's potential for future um, a future facility, maybe a cultural centre um, on the land that's currently um, the wastewater plant. So what what um, when all those sorts of things are starting to get in place, uh, then it would make sense that there will be, you know, things will be um, better, better lit, particularly around where there, you know, there's community. But at the moment, it wouldn't make a lot of sense other than lighting up the PO. We want that to be illuminated subtly because we don't want, there's, there are neighbouring people around, um, but we do want that to be visible from the harbour and as, as people are driving up. So, um, yeah, it will be beautifully lit. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's fantastic to hear. Um, so, and I'll just uh, pass on a little information because I only heard it a couple of weeks ago myself uh, for a design element that may be used in material. You can actually get glow in the dark stones now that can be placed in concrete and things that, that you might want to pass on to your designers because you can tell stories within pathways for at night when you're doing a dark sky. You can have constellations. You can do whatever you want with them, and I think the designers here could use that as a medium as well in their storytelling, which I thought I'll pass it on now just in case there's that opportunity for them to run with it. That's cool, actually. You're, that's, they look amazing. You put that on the list. Yeah, yeah they look phenomenal. <laughs> and they're not super expensive. No, they're not. No, you're right. No, that's really good. No, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. And, um, you know, just with a lot of the issues that we've been dealing with recently, there's been a lot of conversations about co-governance and various things, and this is a very, very positive model when you can see the way of working together, where you weave the stories from Te Ao Māori with, um, with our, our world view. Um, you know, I might see a mountain or a sea or a river, or you'll see a, an ancestor and whakapapa, and it's just such a... A, it's a wonderful basis for, you know, the relationship going forward. So thank you so much for your presentation today. Kia ora. Thank you. Right. The uh, next is the uh, Canterbury Employers uh, Chamber of Commerce, Leanne Watson and Hamish.